session, we can start um, the AES and white box session. We have three papers. The first one is um, Simpira V2, a family of efficient permutations using the AES round function. Uh, the paper is written by Shai Goron, who is in um, University of Haifa, and Niki Moha, who is now in, in NIST, and Niki is giving a talk. Thank you very much. Um, I see that we're here in a very small, cozy room. Uh, also, I won't take up too much of your time. I think I can give the presentation in 20 minutes. So there will be either enough time for questions afterwards, or give me a brief interruption if there's something unclear, and I'll give, uh, I'll give a bit more details about particular slides. I guess something that may have caught uh, the attention of some of you here already is that it says uh, version 2 here in the title. Uh, version 1 was never published, but um, is um, <laughs> also because it was broken, uh, is a, a very early version of the work that uh, was presented at Dachstuhl earlier this year. Um, and we got a huge amount of feedback from many people that are actually here in the room today, uh, some of which also have found uh, some attacks against the early version. And I think this led to a subsequent design that is uh, much better than it would have been if we didn't involve the community already uh, from a very early stage. I really want to thank all of you uh, present here for uh, giving all the feedback that we've received on uh, Simpira. Let me first give a bit of uh, context about who I am, what I'm involved in here. Um, I've decided during just about all of my uh, PhD studies, I've come to the conclusion that there's no need for any new design uh, in, in symmetric key cryptography because all of the things that we need already exist, more or less. But that changed since I, I graduated uh, four and a half years ago. And now I've been involved in um, three designs. So there is um, APE, which is part of Primates, that is an authenticated encryption uh, algorithm that was submitted to the CSER competition and advanced to the second round. Then you have Chusky, published at SAC 2014, that is a Mac algorithm for microcontrollers that is now undergoing ISO standardization. And that is also performing quite well when you look at benchmarks. Like, for example, the benchmarking framework of the University of Luxembourg has Chusky at number one according to their uh, figure of merit. And then now, uh, I hope you're in the right room. This is AsiaCrypt 2016. I'm presenting. Uh, Simpira, the latest uh, design. So this will be a family of, uh, of permutations based on the AES round function. And let me talk a bit more about the background of AES and why you want to use uh, AES. So AES um, instructions are available on the Intel processor initially, and then later on AMD and also ARM. Actually, if you look at any recent 64-bit processor, you will have instructions available to uh, accelerate the advanced encryption standard AES. And AES has, on the latest Intel Skylake uh, processor that we were working on, we are doing this uh, research, has an AES ENC instruction that can compute one round of AES. And it's an instruction that has a latency of four cycles and a throughput of one cycle. So it takes a while to get the output. It takes four cycles to get the output of one uh, round of AES. But already after one cycle, you can start the computation of another uh, in, of, 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 of AES, ENC, one round of AES on, on another input. So what is important here is that if you want to use AES, you need to use, if you want to have an efficient solution, a parallelizable mode of operation, or you need to be processing um, independent messages. Otherwise, you will need to wait four cycles for every uh, output that you need to use again. So this will lead to uh, very inefficient use of the, the processor. Now, we will um, take this into account and even embrace it and say that for the solutions that we are going to look at, we only focus on throughput, we don't focus on latency. So this will mean that the latency may not be so good, but it's a problem that is inherent already to, to AES. So you should really understand this presentation in the context of 
you need to use a parallelizable mode or you need to use independent data. And this seems to be the main thing that confuses people about uh, this talk. But once, you get, once we get an agreement on this, if people say, okay, so the latency is going to be bad, then what you will see will hopefully make sense in the rest of the presentation. Let me give a small example to motivate why you want to use things based on AES or one round of AES in, in, in the first place. Um, I think it can be interesting, instead of looking down at all the details, all the algorithms to seeing what all possibilities are, I think it can be interesting to just look at a higher level um, what, for example, Google Chrome is doing. They have a privileged position where if you go to the Google website, they control both the site of the client and the site of the server. They can use whatever algorithm they like and they apparently don't even want to restrict themselves to standardized algorithms. So the field is pulled wide open. Well, for Google Chrome is the case that only if you do not have AES instructions supported on the client side, you will use ChaCha20 with a Poly1305 authenticator. In other cases, if you use it on any recent processor that has uh, support for AES, you will use AES128 GCM. And also the fact that you use AES instructions, um, at least that's what Shai has informed me, uh, who's working not just at the university at Haifa, but also at Intel, so he should know, I guess, is that if you want to look at designs that are not just going to be efficient on today's processors, but also on processors in the future, then using AES or AES instructions is the way to go because those will only become faster and will only become better on future processors and this will allow you to get the most out of your uh, cryptographic algorithm for future applications. Okay, so I mean this slide just shows use AES so we can stop here. Um, but actually AES cannot do everything. Um, so let me discuss a bit the limitations of AES, and then it will become clear what we will develop in this presentation. For AES, one big problem is that you need a key schedule, and the key schedule of AES is quite complex. So this means that you have two choices. Either you compute the round keys of AES on the fly, but that means that you need to store them in RAM and that it becomes heavier to, I mean, always becomes heavier to, to change the key to another key, because you need to redo this computation. Um, you also need to store those uh, round keys securely. Or if you don't, I mean, you, you, you always have the overhead of a, of, of a key schedule, and this can become a, a large cost. And looking at the key schedule as well, in some of the modes of operation uh, or some of the uses of a block site, you may want a tweak. But this is not natively supported by uh, AES, so it can be another limitation. The block size of AES is always 128 bits. Different key sizes are supported, but only one block size. So this means that in most commonly used modes of operation, you become, I mean, security, the solution become insecure after um, about two to the power 64 blocks of data. And also means that there's no uh, secure hashing support, if that's something you want to do with uh, uh, AES block cipher. We can think of what alternatives can we use to, to AES. And there are many different options there. I mean, originally, Reindal, which is the algorithm uh, that was submitted to the NIST competition for AES as a, as a submission, also supported different block sizes and even different key sizes than the one that is now standardized. So you could think of maybe using Reindal with 256-bit blocks. Uh, you can think of maybe SHA-2. For SHA-1 and SHA-2, there are also instructions available in the Intel processor or base yourself on some other types of primitives. Now we do an analysis in the paper of all the alternatives that you can look at, at least the most obvious ones, um, and see that they are not so, I mean not inefficient, but not as efficient as they could be. And in this paper we will propose Simpira, which is a much faster solution if you want to uh, tackle the problems in this paper. Simpira is a family of permutations, cryptographic permutations that support any multiple integer of 128 bits. Now we're not saying that you're supposed to use the very biggest variants in this uh, family, but also as a designer, we don't want to restrict ourselves to 
the type, the size of the permutation that uh, we want to recommend. The design is scalable, and if you find the use to use a permutation of a very particular size, if it's a multiple of 128, then we are offering it, and that's the one that you can implement in your uh, in your protocol or in your mode of operation in your system to uh, to use as a building block for B larger than two. We will look at Feistel and generalized Feistel constructions. And the way that they are designed, I mean, here you see a Feistel on the right side, is that um, we will use two rounds of AES inside. We also look in the paper of what happens if you use one round of AES and then the uh, security results are not as good. Two rounds of AES. And also, um, a constant is needed. Basically, if you use AES ENC, which is the instruction to do one round of AES, then as one of the operands of this instruction, you can give a constant or, I mean, typically it's used if you use it for AES, uh, the round key that you want to use for this round. What we'll do in this case, we'll, we'll use, um, for the first operation of AES, we'll use um, a constant that we need to add in to destroy the symmetry. If you don't do this, then if all of the bytes are equal at the input, then they will remain equal because the AES round function has no way of uh, breaking the structure. And then use the second uh, XOR that we get as part of AES ENC to do a combination of the branches in the Feistel. So the design goal here is then to have security up to 2 to the power 128 queries that you will do. So this is security in the sense of structural distinguisher, the same that is done for SHA-3. To have a very easy analysis to guarantee this, just from the fact that we say 2 to the power 128, we're not considering any of the modes of operation using AES that typically only have security that breaks down uh, around 2 to the power 64. And if we can use the trick that I explained higher, it should be in the ideal case that the amount of cycles that the processor is executing is roughly equal, in the best case equal, to the number of rounds of AES, because it means that you can launch a new AES round every clock cycle, which would be the ideal case uh, of having your implementation have the properties that you're looking for during the design. So now we need some basic requirements to analyze the security, and we uh, follow quite closely what is done for um, AES, so we look at counting the number of active S boxes, and we require that the number of active S boxes should be, I mean, you calculate the number of active, the number of rounds for which you have at least 25 active S boxes. You also calculate the number of rounds for which you have full bit diffusion, meaning every output bit affects every input bit. For the first criterion, of course, both linear and differential cryptanalysis, and you multiply this number of rounds by three. And then we argue in the paper that this is going to give us a very good, um, not just security, but also security margin against all of the common attacks that would apply to uh, AES-like constructions. And then of all the constructions that we look at, we want to use the one with the fewest number of uh, F functions. And as every F function contains two AES instructions, uh, two rounds of AES, sorry. That means that you have the fewest number of AES ENC instructions, fewest number of rounds of AES. When we have multiple designs that would satisfy those criteria, the goal is to choose the simplest design. And of course, also, these designs criteria are only supposed to guide the selection of the algorithms. Still, once you get the algorithms, you're supposed to do cryptanalysis to see if they are secure or not. So here I present you uh, Simpera with B equal to one, so like the smallest member of the, mem of the family processing 128 bit blocks. And this is AES with a fixed round key. So you have uh, 12 rounds of AES if you want to satisfy the criteria of the previous slide. And you may see that this is a design that has a very bad latency because you need to wait uh, quite a lot of cycles to get the output. In this case, 12 times 4 is 48. But actually, already in the next cycle, you can launch another instruction. So this is an uh, inherent problem for everything I will present here. We have a normal uh, Feistel for B equal to 2, where we have 15 rounds corresponding them, because every F function has two uh, AES ENCs. Every AES ENC instruction is to 30 AES ENCs. 
to satisfy those I showed for this criteria. And then for B equal to three, um, it's also a really simple design. And this is supposed to be the advantage. When you see that the designs are simple, it means that um, they're probably secure. There's not uh, uh, a lot of doubt you can have once you see the design of the principles on the previous slide. In this case, with uh, 21 rounds. Then when we looked at um, B, so here you see version one, B larger than or equal to four, except for two values of B, which I will discuss later, uh, we found that the construction by Yani Yanagihara and Iwata is the one that minimizes the number of F functions of all the constructions that we looked at with an identical, uh, all the constructions of generalized Faisals, all the variants you could find in literature. This is the one that minimizes the number of uh, F functions for the whole For B equal to six, and also in the next slide for B equal to eight, there are two designs in literature that we found that are better. So then according to the, I mean, in the sense of having fewer AEF rounds to be executed. So that means that um, if we want to be fair, well, those are the ones we really should be using because they are simple, standard uh, constructions that have been analyzed for quite a while already. Um, they just do the shuffling of the blocks inside between every round in a different in this case, for 15 rounds, and then here you have the variant B equal to eight using 18 uh, FISO rounds as part of the criteria. But this is not what we use because that was the early design that turned out to be broken. A first attack by uh, Dobronik et al. present in this room um, was published at SAC this year and shows a collision on a Sintira based hash function where the full round Sintira is attacked with a complexity of two to the power 83. So we said security you should have up to two to the power 128, so this version is uh, clearly broken. But then there's another attack as well that was published uh, just about in the same week uh, by uh, Ronyam, where he shows an invariant subspace attack for the same variant. And there, his attack has interesting properties that it is not just independent of the number of rounds. So increasing the number of rounds will not restore security. But also that you can break it with only two queries. <laughs> so that means the design is completely broken. Now if you want to look into uh, these two attacks and see what actually has been going wrong here, it turns out that the problem is only with the Simpira variants that use this uh, Yanagihara Iwata uh, generalized Faisal construction. That's um, that's the one we, we analyzed in detail and we explained in the paper. Basically, you need to be careful with independences. When you have a cryptographic permutation, there is no secret key, so it becomes difficult to assume that in every round probabilities that you're going to calculate are the behavior of the ciphers independent of the previous round. Um, and that's an assumption that classically was never a problem because we classically used very heavy key schedules to have this uh, Markov cipher with independent subkeys assumption hold. But in the modern world, especially since a lot of research has moved into hash functions, that doesn't hold anymore and um, we can have for example, things like invariant subspace attacks that are often overlooked that make it so that you have an interesting situation where you can have security against just about every attack in the book, in your cryptanalysis, differential cryptanalysis, meet in the middle attack, but you can be completely insecure against this type of attack. It's something that, so it's not a defense. I mean, we, the design was broken, so this comes out, uh, this is uh, something we should have avoided. Um, but when you look at recent literature, uh, also also including a paper we'll be presented here at uh, AsiaCrypt, a lot of research is going into invariant subspace attacks, and it's something many designers have gotten burnt by. Um, how does it need to be fixed? Well, basically this um, type one GFS by Yanagihara and Iwata is problematic and needs to be replaced. Also, um, the round constants are not the problem, but could have prevented the problem and strengthening the round constants is something that will not uh, make the cipher weaker. 
So what we do is we strengthen the round constants. We basically do the same, exactly the same change that was done for the Rustle hash function when it moved into the final round of the shaft recompetition. So we do exactly the same change in how the round constants are being computed. And we add, for, I mean, I'm a cryptanalysis guy myself, right? We add for fairness as part of the paper that we still think that with the old round constant, the design should be secure. So the problem should not be as part of the, I mean, a result of choosing the round constants badly. So this is more to make a logical change, to strengthen the cipher and to remove any suspicion of insecurity. But for those who want to attack it, even with the old round constants, as soon as the type one GFS is replaced, the design should be secure. So as you can see here, this is the updated uh, variant for B equal to four, just because this is the, the simplest design. Then for B equal to five and bigger, it's, uh, so this is an animation I will show, because we have only four inputs. Uh, it's a uh, construction that is um, recursive. Here you see what it's like for uh, four inputs. But this thing, as you can see here, I'm also mentioning at the bottom, this thing is not the whole construction. You need to iterate it three rounds. So this thing needs to be repeated uh, three times. Then you can turn this into five. This is the construction we use by adding two F functions to the right and two to the right, which is right top and right bottom, um, to get the, the result for having five 120 byte uh, inputs. And then if you want to go to six, seven, or eight, like increasingly when it becomes bigger, it becomes less readable, but luckily people are still able to get good numbers. You basically get a big uh, X somewhere. So we lost the simplicity in the sense that we don't have identical round functions anymore. Um, but we hope that this construction is still simple enough to allow an, an easy analysis. The number of uh, calls to the F function is the same as in Yanegihara Iwata's construction. So we don't lose anything in efficiency. This can be seen as just uh, fixing the problem that was in the, the previous. And to round up, if you look at benchmark, um, we basically show that we can reach what we claimed in the beginning, which is that every round we succeed at dispatching a new AES instruction. But there's a small um, remark that you need to make here, a small caveat, and that is that um, you can look at interleaved or non-interleaved implementations, where interleaved means that you would have laid out in memory the first block first message, the first block of the second message, the first block of the third message, or like different inputs. So interleaving them instead of having the whole message block right after each other. And when you interleave messages, you can have the optimal performance even for very large calls of the permutation. Uh, and otherwise, you will start to see that the overhead becomes quite significant after around uh, permutation inputs of larger than 120. Okay, so um, the main goal of this presentation is not to go into applications, but I will uh, be happy to discuss this further for those who are interested. Um, I want to move here to my conclusion just to allow a bit of time for questions. So Sintira is a family of permutations based on the AES round function that supports any multiple of 128 bits. As a building block of two rounds of AES and claims not only an easy security analysis, but also security up to two to the power 128 queries. And when you look at the implementation figures, then we show that we are very close to the theoretical optimum, which would be to dispatch a new AES round instruction every block. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, picture with the X, big X. Yeah. Now I'm afraid. The one up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the big one. Uh, the big one, the big one. Okay, this one. Yes. So I'm a bit worried about uh, the uh, highly restricted influence that the left side can have on the right side due to the fact that uh, you have a very narrow bottleneck. Uh -huh. It's only in the middle yeah, where yeah. data is moved from uh, influences uh, the other side. So if you're thinking about uh, collision attacks, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you can show that such a uh, design cannot uh, 
be secure up to the uh, square root uh, bound. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So um, did you consider schemes in which the, uh, you don't have such bottlenecks which uh, limit uh, very strongly how one part can influence the other part in your permutation? Actually, um, I mean, so it's a very valid remark, and the simple answer could be just to say, we repeat this three times, and this is where the security should come from. Um, but actually, replying to your question, this is a problem that not just this design had, but all of the designs, uh, all of the Faisal designs that you can consider. So you need a certain number of rounds so that every input can start affecting every output. Otherwise, you have these bottlenecks, as you can see, that uh, more rounds are needed before you can No, uh, the, the problem is actually deeper, because in this design, every uh, input can, every input bit can influence every output bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you are going to uh, have a collision of uh, the, info in the information which is passed from one side to the other, uh, you just don't have sufficient variety of uh, uh, information theoretically how much information about the left side is going to influence the right side. So it's not the uh, single bits which do not influence, mm -hmm. but it is that uh, many combinations are going to have exactly the same influence. Mm -hmm. One side but to one. let's not forget that we're only targeting security up to 2 to the power I know. 128. That's what so will save you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Any other question? That number down there, it says number of AES calls 24B. So it means that yeah, for so every B. message, what you're doing 24 AES rounds, is that correct? Um, so you need to say what B is. So uh, when you fix the value of B, and B is the number of uh, 128 blocks of input of your permutation, then 24 times B minus 36, that's the number of AES rounds that you're executing through the whole permutation. So let's forget, yeah, I understand. Okay, so let's okay. forget about minus 36. So 24 B only, it means in general that you're using 24 AES rounds for 128 bit message, no? Um, no, first, uh, oh, okay, I, I see where you want to go. Um, I mean, the input but, is but B times 128. No? Sorry? The input is B times. B is hard. B yeah, is no, the number no, of blocks. To... So the input is B times 128 bits. Well, look, you have 24B. You forget about the, the 36, yes. right? You have 24B. For processing B times For processing 16B data. So this means, uh, okay. and I have this here on the last slide, this means that when your input become large, your performance is, when you, when you can ignore the, 60, the 36, uh, 1.5 cycles per byte. That's bad, right? Maybe That's what you want to say? Or <laughs> okay. You can do better, but we want something that is secure up to 2 to 128 uh, queries. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or 128 times B bits. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think uh, into the details we should leave it for the um, for the coffee break. Okay. I we have can a discuss further. Yeah. I have a short question about. I mean, we don't have much time, but I would like to know about. Um, um, so you're the session chair, Efficiency. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, about efficiency of the implementation. Can, see, can you go again to the, to the large figure, large? Uh, yeah. No, no, the large one, the construction that you have. Okay, yeah, okay. this one. Um, you designed this to, let's say, use all the steps, pipeline steps of the AES implementation in the, sure. A, uh, in the Intel microcontroller, mm -hmm. microprocessor, right? And then two of them, let's say the left one and the right one, can write, and then can go to the pipeline after each other, but mm -hmm. at least because in each of these F functions, you have two AES rounds, then mm -hmm. with these two, you feel completely the pipeline, mm -hmm. right? And then next one, when one of them comes out, then you can start one of the other ones. Mm -hmm. The order of the operation is important for you to reach the highest uh, the efficiency, or doesn't matter which, which of them you give first to the pipeline. If you want to execute just one permutation call, you cannot fill the pipeline. No, but F and F, two F you have at the top, one at the yeah. left, one at the right. But you have latency of four. 
Yeah, but you need to be executing four independently if you want to. No, the you pipeline. give you give one of them left one to the F, which is a one A yes round. Yeah. Next clock cycle, you give the next one of the uh, that one you cannot give, but that one you can yeah. give right to the left, the, uh, yeah. the right and then one. You're stuck. Yeah, but then then you are not using the whole pipeline again. And this is why, uh, and that's uh, like I mean, if if people can agree with the very very first uh, slide which says already you have the problem with AES inherently of the fact of that you're using AES, that you need to have a parallelizable mode or you need to be processing independent data. So putting it into Shai's words, the way he explained it to me is, he's been advocating for such a long time at Intel that we need to use parallelizable modes because that's important to make AES work efficiently. So if you're willing to accept this, that the mode needs to be parallelizable, then that's not a problem because you just have your different input block where you will be able to uh, process your and fill the pipeline. Sorry, but your construction is not using the whole pipeline of the AES. It's available in the to market. To use the whole pipeline, you need to have a parallelizable mode or you need to have independent data. Otherwise, you don't fill the pipeline. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's thank um, Nikki again.